Welcome along, this is going to be a programming video on how to set up for a start, stop, maintain or a set, reset, flip-flop. We're going to use, use and show both methods on how to obtain control from a single input or multiple inputs to keep an output on and then how to turn it off again. So we're utilising our tag table for the conveyor rig. So we have it still inserted from before, we've got S1 and S2 which are high and low beam with three beam sensors. We've got S, W, G and R, which is our switch green and switch red, our two push buttons. The three sensors, R, 3, 2 and 1, which are our extended sensors for when the three cylinders are extended. And then output wise, we get E, which is enable to turn on the conveyor. R, which is a reversing contact. So to go forward, you need E on. To go reverse, you need E and R on together. And then you get your three cylinder outputs, C, 1, 2 and 3. And then you get two lumps. So you get a red lamp and a green lamp. So we are going to program to make uh, something very simple happen. First of all, we need to go and add in a new block. So we go over here to function. I'm just going to call it conveyor control or anything similar. I will add that in. It's a good point of reference at this point to directly just call FC1 from OB1. When your machine powers up, the only thing that operates is OB1. So you have to tell FC1 to operate, which we've now done, just for the sake of tidiness, and put that in. And then under OB1, this is what we have, and then conveyor control, which is an FC, which is a function currently completely empty. So I'm going to put in a latching circuit. I will just show you very quickly. I'm just doing the demo on my rig at the front of the room. I've got them all labeled up here, S1, 2, switch green, switch red. R, 3, 2, and 1, and then our outputs are simulated by the lamps here, E and R for enable and reverse, the three cylinders, C, 1, 2, and 3, lamp red and lamp green. And S1 and S2 are currently on or pressed because they're three beam sensors which would be currently made and switch red, we're simulating with a uh, normally closed push button by pressing it and keeping it active. So for that particular one, we're going to add in a set of commands to make a latching circuit. So we're going to put in our initial one, SW, and you start typing, brings up everything that begins with what you've typed. So we pick SWG. We're going to have SWR in here just initially. It's going to be our, our starting point. And our output is going to be uh, our conveyor. So we're just going to go E to begin with. And then whatever your output is, is what your latch should be as well. So now the idea being here that that is an open command, but is currently active because it's a normally closed switch. We will press SWG at some stage, which will then trigger E to come on. It will then give itself a bypass around the starting condition and will then keep itself on. So that should be all is required. Um, I will click on my project click on the compile button to get zero error, zero warnings, which is good. Press my download button. I've already previously connected to this, so it's going very quick. And press finish to upload. We will then go on to monitor mode. And we can see currently that uh, SWR is on. And if I operate this, we will split screen. If I operate SWR, as you see here, going into the off position, we see we lose that um, I0.3 here. So we're going to keep it on, mimicking what the real push button would be doing. That means if we press SWG, one beside it, press it, we see obviously I0.2 becomes active and the output E. If I let go, we see that E has maintained itself on and will only go off when I press the SWR and then it goes off again. So press it to make it come on and then I have to press the red button to make it go off. Now it's a detent switch so I have to press it twice to get it to be operational. So that's one method of getting E to come on and stay on. Okay, so let's just go offline with that. And then I'm going to do something similar but with a set reset flip flop. This time label it up SR. So there's both SR and also 
SRS, whichever one is lower down is the more dominant. Typically SR is what you're going to need. So our set command for this is going to be our SWG. We select. Now if you have no additional controlling outputs requirements, for instance here, uh, the output that you wish to control can directly go here. So I can type E to the top section here. That means that's what it's going to control. So SWG coming on uh, is the set command. We'll turn on the output E or Q0.0. .0. And then if I get the um, SWR, which we have to use reverse logic for. So that means if I don't press that, uh, therefore I'll have uh, a reset coming in and that will control my Q0.0 .0 or E command. So I've only updated that one part of it, so I should be able to just download and update that one section. And if I go back to here and go online again with monitor mode, I see that um, both these are sitting inactive effectively. And if I wait and press my SWG and let go, you see the output is set on and stayed on, as you can see in the very top left of where your, your E is. And if I press the SWR to mimic the red lamp being pressed, you see it then goes off. So I've now got press SWG, turn it on, press SWR to make it go off. And now we've utilized both set and reset via the SR flip flop and the start, stop, maintain. And that is how to obtain turning something on, leaving it on via a latch or a set reset flip flop, and then how to turn it off again.